Hi Gophers, my name is Alex Pluto and welcome to the Package My New video. Before we talk about GoKit, I want to share some good news with you. If you are from Vietnam and watching this video, we are organizing the first GopherCon in Vietnam Ho Chi Minh City. It will be held in November. Sponsors and speakers are welcome. You may find all information on gophercon.vn. Nowadays, microservices is one of the most popular buzzwords in the field of software architecture. There are many different definitions of the word microservice. I like to say that microservice is what single developer can design, implement, deploy and maintain. In a monolithic application, components invoke one another via language level methods or function calls. In contrast, a microservice-based application is a distributed system running on different machines. Each service instance is typically a process, so services must interact using inter-process communication. And simple possible solution is JSON over HTTP. However, there are other options like gRPC, PubSub, etc. Sounds cool, but there are challenges which come with microservices. Serialization, login, circuit breakers, service discovery, and so on. And if you are a Go developer, here GoKit comes with a set of abstractions and packages to solve some of these problems and uh, provide you some standards. With this video, I want to start an in-depth tutorial on GoKit tool. We will build a system based on microservices, set up environment, review how interactions made between services. We will create a fictional bug tracker system with the help of few microservices – users, bugs and notificators. Some of them will be accessible with JSON over HTTP and internal communication will be done with gRPC. We should understand that GoKit is not framework. It's a toolkit in Go to build microservices providing packages and interfaces. It's similar to Spring Boot but smaller in scale. We should understand that GoKit is not a framework. It's a toolkit to build microservices in Go, providing some packages, interfaces. It's somehow similar to Java Spring Boot, but smaller in scope. Now we are going to init our projects. GoKit has a command line tool called KitGen to generate a service from template. However, community says that it's not ready for production use. But there are other open source packages which will help us to create a GoKit project. Now let's get the package which will help us to create a service from command line. And now let's generate services from this command line tool, git new service users. As you can see, it created a folder with a bunch of, actually with one package and one go file. Let's do the same for service box and for service notificator. So now we have three folders. This command will create a service.go file with an empty interface. So now let's define the functions of our service. In case of bugs, it will be function create. Um, for now, let's just send bug a string and uh, return an error. Right, you don't need the name parameters here. And let's do the same for the notificator. Let's create a function send email with email as string and content as string. And return an error. And for users, we will have function create is email on. and we will return an error. Then we need to run a command to generate the service itself, which will create the boilerplate, endpoints and middlewares. So let's do this. git generate service users and minus minus dmw, which will create default middlewares. And let's do the same for bugs. This command added endpoints, HTTP transport, login middleware. So what we need to do now is just to implement the business logic of our services. Notificator is internal service, so we don't need to have HTTP endpoints. 
And here we will use gRPC. gRPC stands for Google RPC Framework. And if you never use it, check it on gRPC.io. Before you create a gRPC transport, we have to install Proto-C and Proto-Buff. Let's generate a notificator service. It generate service notificator. And to set the transport type, we should type minus T gRPC and minus minus DMW. All right, it's created. As you can see, it created our proto file, which we will define in the next video. Let's see what we have for user service, for example. We have a service file, and here actually we need to put a business logic into create function. And then we have a middleware, so we have a login middleware, and uh, we already have a logs when we call the endpoints. And then we have a HTTP transfer, uh, so it works with JSON, all encoders and decoders are here already, so we don't need to bother about it. The command line tool I'm using to generate the services also has an option to generate a Docker Compose file for all your services. The kit command line tool I'm using can also generate a Docker Compose file including all your services there. So let's try it. git generate docker and you will see here a Docker Compose file with all services and um, already assigned ports, etc. It also created a Docker file for each service, which we can modify if we want. It works with Watcher, so basically when we save the Go file, it will restart the application. Okay, let's run our environment. It's simple as Docker Compose app. Great, we have our services running. Let's try to call our endpoints. So our user service is running on port 8802. And let's send some fake data there. All right, it's not found, it's because the endpoint it should be created. Right, so there is no error, but we have some response. And also we have some logs. Great. We haven't implemented services yet, but we prepared a good local environment, which can be later deployed to your infrastructure as we containerized everything with Docker. In the next videos, we will implement some logic and we will connect the services between each other and also we will try some other GoKit packages. I hope it was interesting and useful. See you later.